Okay, in this tutorial, we are going to be learning how to create a kind of retro style poster. Now, I haven't quite been able to figure out like what kind of poster this is. It's more like a kind of retro, it could be mover, movie poster, a record album poster, a promotional poster, an advertisement. Either way, it's uh, we're kind of thinking of that retro style. And they, each one of these is kind of the same ingredients. You have the image, of course photo or art, you have the big text, which is essentially like, what is the piece about? What is the message about the entire thing? So this could be the band name, this could be the movie title, and then you have your tiny text. Now this tiny text can be informational, but for the most part, it almost acts as like decorative. Like it's aligned in a way that is like usually creating balance and filling negative space which is also a requirement. You need to have a space of negative space, but you want to try and make sure that you have balanced it with something else so that it doesn't just look like nothing there. So in that case, we have embellishments, which could be created with brushes, which we'll learn how to download, or embellishments such as wingdings, which are already available inside of the program. And then we also have, they always have a photo grain to give it that old antique look, as well as the last little embellishment, which I call um, a functional feature. And the functional feature can be a barcode, like it is the idea of like, it is a could function in some capacity. Other examples of a functional feature would be um, a stamp or a um, like a, a marker for transport or a stamp from uh, like a, that you would get on a passport or like the stamp that you get from transporting like mail like the 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 going through the US mail service. So all of those are options for what your functional feature can be. You could also make your feature literally function. You could put a QR code, which in a way is some sort of a design, and then you could have it lead to a link specifically of something you've actually curated. So this is the ingredients you're going to need. And so the next thing that you want to do before you start collecting any of your ingredients is having the piece chosen, like the tone of the work that you're going to be doing. Um, um, I like having nice uh, areas where I have this area of rest with this blank space, but I like to still have the words. Now, this is the style I'm going to be showing you how to do. I'm going to show you how to create these words that go over top, but it isn't required to make this style work. You could also have these where the text is separate from the photo and just matches in the color tone, and then you filled that blank space with more embellishments. So, um, there are a lot of different examples of what these can look like. Um, so just kind of finding the best way that kind of fits your vibe. So I want to go for something a little bit more quirky. I like humor, but, and I'm going to go to first Photoshop. Now I've downloaded images from, uh, uh, the Metropolitan Art Museum, and so they're all copyright free images. So that means I can share these anywhere and not have to worry about copyright. And I'm going to choose this to be um, album cover slash Instagram ready. You can also do poster style, and I would keep it vertical. I would try not to do it in the horizontal medium just for readability sake. And I'm going to press create. So now I have this square. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the uh, picture that I've chosen. So I have a folder filled with all sorts of different pictures. I'm going to choose this cow and uh, I'm going to bring it in. Now my idea was to create essentially um, a cow being like abducted by aliens. So I have also a copyright free alien saucer that I'm going to put in here. So first I'm going to place my cow. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put in my text. So I was going to write, have a cow as my text. And once you have written your text, the, what you really want to make sure that you're doing is if it is in this area that it's actually visible, you can see the color of your text right here. And if it's white on white, obviously you're not going to be able to see what it is. So I'm just going to make sure that my text is really readable. Um, the color of the text in this particular style doesn't matter. Um, the color of the text, if you have it outside of your um, picture, will matter. So let's say I have this one and I want to make it exactly the color of something in my picture. I can just use, if I go into that bar, I can just use and pick a color out of there. But like I said, in this particular situation, 
it doesn't matter. So now once I've got that, I'm going to go to my little selection over here, and I am now going to size it. Um, I like sizing it manually because I don't love having um, I don't love having the uh, text being decided by the font because if I look at what the font is right here, the font says it's something crazy. I'm going to go to here, click on it. It says it's a 98.48. That's a really hard font to achieve by like clicking on it and trying to guessing. So I like to just go to my selector tool and I like to make it work like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I make sure that it's from the edge to edge so that it fits my picture perfectly because I want this to kind of be where my image starts. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my picture. Now this is where it's going to get a little complicated. We are going to be starting with layer masking. Now layer masking is your best friend. You're going to use it all the time. To start a layer mask, make sure that you're on the image that you want to cut away from. So since I want to have, have a cow look like it is the image itself, I'm going to go into here and I'm going to click this. So now I have my layer mask. I'm then going to go to the marquee tool and I'm going to make a box right where I want my image to start. So I'm going to have this little break here and then I have to have the cow start here. I then make sure that my box is over here, is selected over the layer mask. So this is the image. See how the bracket shifts? This is the layer mask. If I'm selected on this, everything will go wrong. I have to be selected on the layer mask. I set my color to black and then I go to G for the um, uh, paint bucket tool. A lot of times the default is the gradient tool. Hold down on your mouse and just switch it to the paint bucket tool. I click on here and as you can see it goes away. Now it's cutting through so I'm seeing the background. The beauty of layer masking is that it will it's just like essentially cutting out and you can always bring it back if you need to which is why I use it for this. To kind of prove this point I'm gonna go to here I'm gonna select kind of a like a yellow and then I'm gonna dump paint and I'm on my background. As you can see the yellow showed up everywhere else and I can still see have my have a cow. Alright so I'm gonna go to my uh, magic wand tool. So if you press W on your keyboard it allows you to get to the magic uh, quick select to tool. I'm gonna do magic wand tool. For this I like using this. It's an old older school tool. I click on then my text. I go to the have a cow layer and I click on my text. It only selects the O, but if I go right click and I go similar, now it selects everything. I then can go down, remember layer mask is the key. Now black erases and white brings back. So I switch it from using this little toggle over here, I switch it to white. I go back to my paint bucket tool and I just dump it right into it. Now you're like, nothing happened. Don't worry, don't worry. Something did happen. I remove, turn off the eye on my text for have a cow, and it, there it is. It's back. So this is the way that I like to kind of create my layer mask using this. And the other thing is, is because it's on a layer mask, if I don't love this font, I can always switch it out. I can change it as many times as I want. I don't have to keep it this way. So now I've got my um, have a cow text come out and I'm ready for some embellishments. So the first embellishment that I'm going to add, I'm going to go over to my uh, Google again and I'm going to go to a tool called Brush Easy. Now Brush Easy is a way that you can download brushes for your um, Photoshop. So I really like Halftone. I think it's going to make a cool detail but if you really wanted to create, let's say you wanted stamps. So, so you wanted to kind of make it look like it was like going through customs. Um, you could go in here. Here's just postage stamps. I click on this. I go to free download. I give it a second so it finishes the download and then I go to here and I go to my zip and I go into here and then this is the file you're looking for. You want it to say ABR file. Sometimes Brush Easy will have files that aren't ABR files so as long as you have one it'll work. As soon as you click on it it's just going to open up into Photoshop and that just means that it's downloaded. If you have it open up don't worry it didn't crash it just means that it's loaded in. So I go to my brushes now and I go up to the top or you can right click on your brushes to show where they are and I go all the way to the bottom because it brings it in chronologically. So as you can see 20 vintage post brushes 
there's where they are. I can then open them up. Now I can't see what the tips look like, which isn't great for when you are trying to actually find them. So if you go to this little gear at the top, I can go to brush tip, and now I can see the different tips available. So now I can go through all of these and I can see them, but I can also click on them. And when I bring them out, I can see what they look like. So I'm gonna make this one smaller, not too small, but I want it to kind of be at the side. I'm gonna change my font to like a brown, or change my color to a brown. And I'm gonna make a new layer and I can then stamp it on the side like that. Now, I think that that one's a little light, so I could kind of do that. And it doesn't matter how many you do that way. I also downloaded some Art Nouveau ones a little bit earlier, so I could go into there and find some, so I have some stormy seas, I've got clouds, I've got my paint brush splatter. I could do one of these as well to kind of get a little, make it kind of look like it's been found. kind of like that, but I want it to be maybe a little more like neon or kind of goofy. There we go. So now I have this because my um, spaceship is actually kind of a crazy looking color. So I've got that. I've got a couple little features. This isn't enough, but I, I'm getting kind of started on it. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I have my, I'm going to get my actual spaceship in. So I get my spaceship in. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to size it down and I'm going to make it kind of hovering over. I like the look of having my um, text look as if it is both part of the original picture, but then I also have this spaceship that kind of goes over top of it, giving it multiple layers. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I want to get my photo grain in. So I'm going down to my photo. Remember, make sure that you're selected on the photo this time, not on the mask. And you can go to filter. So I'm going to open, make that sure this is full screen, go to filter, and I can go to add noise. So adding noise, this is how I can create um, this kind of uniform kind of pixelated look. This is, I feel like, a little too much, but I do like how kind of this looks. I can also do uniform or I can do kind of uh, Gaussian or Gaussian. I'm not sure how people use it. I kind of like that. I'm okay with that. Um, I could also, if I wanted to, I could go into filter and I could go to liquify. And liquify is where you can actually push things to the side. So you can actually kind of skew and make things look a little bit more um, like it doesn't fit. You can kind of create almost this weird look as if it's kind of like moving and changing. So now I have these like, it almost looks like when I put in this beam, it's gonna look like it's kind of sucking up the corners a little bit, which is another feature I like. So I've now got my spaceship, I've got my other th things, I've got like my little details. Let's talk about something that's just built in. So if I wanted to have some um, features for like tiny text or whatever, I can go into here and I can just select little bitty pieces of text and just bring them in really, really small. And remember, these can kind of work as, as my um, some decorative pieces. Because what you don't want to have is your, um, your white space to be boring. You don't want it to ha not have anything in it to keep the audience inter like entertained. Because you want to make sure that this is almost like the brutalist style is a little bit over the top and it can kind of be like almost crowded in the space, but it's also balanced. I have something over here. I should have something over here. So I could put like um, the date, which I'm going to say is like January 5th, 9, 1892. I don't know. And that one's green. That's not what I want, but I can then kind of play around with that. So now I have my little text there. Um, which kind of gives it a little bit more of a balance. I can go over here and I can write France. France. And kind of get something else on the side. So I get a little bit of balance there. And then I'm going to go into my text one more time. And I'm going to put something up here. But this time I'm going to utilize my wingdings. So wingdings were actually created in like um, uh, the age of the print press when they didn't have... Uh, actual design work. They, this was like the first way they could add embellishments with like little 
press. And then as soon as Windows, it was actually called um, Dingbats originally. And then as soon as Windows started making them, they called them a Wingdings because they were inspired by them, but they weren't the original creators. So that's how we got our Wingdings of today. Um, so here are them. They are they're different symbols. Um, I'm going to see if any of these have a star. So the only way to really kind of play around with wingdings, unfortunately, is to just kind of try them out till you get the one you want. Because I could look up that specific wingding or I could just go through and find it. Ooh, there's the one I want. Which one was that? It was over here. Was it that guy? Ah, so it's L. So I want that little guy. So I'm going to take L make one of these and then I can bring them over, size them out and put them somewhere as my little other little embellishments. So wingdings is one way you can add about embellishments, just having tiny text. Remember tiny text is kind of required to kind of create that other element of balance. You can use the brushes or you can use your wingdings. So, uh, once you've kind of got that all together, you can, one last thing to kind of bring it together is an overlay. An overlay kind of, with everything that I've done, it's kind of starting to look a little mishmashed. So I've just gone onto Google and I found a random overlay of like scratchy aged, um, like elements. So what I do is I just bring this on here on top and I'm gonna use my layer modes. So all I do is I go to here and I can switch through these and choose the one that fits. So I can actually have this then create what ends up kind of looking like a nice unifying piece to this. As you can see, I can kind of turn up or down the intensity and it'll just kind of make a scratchiness to it. So that is kind of how you can kind of do it. Obviously, I don't feel like I'm done with it. I would honestly put a little bit more over here to kind of create a little bit more visual balance, maybe a couple lines, maybe a couple squares to kind of round it out. Um, I'm going to kind of finish it up, and then I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. All right, the last few things that I did as I was kind of going through this is I added a little square on the outside edge to kind of fill in some of that space. I also added a line. By the way, to do these, you can go into Rectangular Tool and just make sure that your fill is got a line through it. That means that it will be a hollow box, and then you can set the size and color of your um, outside line to anything. The other thing that you can do is for your line work, you can actually use the Line Tool, and you can make your line and using the guides to kind of make sure that it's straight. I know mine isn't perfectly straight, but like you can usually use your guides to kind of help you um, to make it straight. And then at, once you've created that, there's actually arrows. You can make arrowheads at the end of them so that they'll have different arrows on there. Um, so that is how you can then create different line work as well. So I have a couple of these. Um, I also added in a, a little glowing piece coming from this to kind of give it this uh, look as if it's being abducted. And all I did was add a new layer and I used the polygonal lasso tool and dumped paint in it and then just changed it to soft light at 82% opacity. So that's kind of how I ended up uh, doing my own kind of goofy uh, cow picture. Um, last thing that I'd encourage you to do is like, if something just doesn't quite feel right about it, make some tweaks. Remember with Photoshop and like the masking, that's the beauty of it. You can still kind of adjust things as you go. You can change the color. You can adjust certain elements to make it right. Try a different, a bunch of different things and see what ends up working for you. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you'll discover something you didn't realize that you needed. So good luck. Uh, experiment and see what works. Have fun editing.